In this video, I'll introduce skinning in 3ds Max. Skinning is the process of binding a mesh to a skeleton for animation. This way, we can animate the skeleton or its controllers, and the mesh will deform and follow correctly. The first step is to have the mesh and the skeleton made. I've got an arm mesh and two bones plus a nub with an IK chain at the wrist. What I've done here is actually the first step in skinning. I've animated this bone chain moving in a range of motion test where the IK simply picks up. It's keyed up to frame 60 or so and goes back down by about 120. What this will let me do is scrub along the timeline and see if my skinning works. Now I'm ready to skin this mesh. I'll select the arm and under the modifier list I'll choose skin. Here's the skin modifier. I'll select it and it's applied to that mesh. The first step once you've applied the skin modifier is to add the bones in. I'll scroll down and here's a bones window with an add button. I'll click on add. What this lets me do is select the bones I want to add into the skin. In this case I want to add bones 1 and 2 because 3 is a nub out here on the wrist. I'll hold control and select bone 2 as bone 1 is already selected. Then I'll click on Select. As I scrub on the timeline, I can see that the mesh is definitely bound to those bones. It is following them, but I am getting some folding here at the elbow I need to sort out. I'll press F3 to go to a shaded view, and then right-click and choose Envelope. What this shows me, with Bone 2 selected here in the window in the modifier panel, is the influence from that bone. Vertices can be weighted between as many bones as you want but the weights on them must always equal 1. What we see here is that the wrist vertices are red. They are entirely weighted to this bone. And the influence tapers off, as defined by these capsule-shaped envelopes, through orange and then into blue along the edge of the arm. As I scrub that back and forth, we can see the mesh folds over itself in the elbow. So I need to adjust the weighting here. A quick way to do this is to right-click as I've done and choose envelope. With the envelopes, then you can select them and pull them around. I'll select the envelope at the elbow from bone 2, which is the forearm. As I click and drag on the z-axis, you can see the influence changing, more or less influence from that bone on that mesh. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit, so it doesn't affect this elbow area so much. And then I'll scrub on the timeline and see if that helped. Envelopes are a good way to start out getting the mesh in the right place, but we have other tools we can use if we need. We can pick on an envelope, the inner and outer envelope. I'm going to pick the inside one and again, pull it out. Once I start to pull this around, I can see the influence is changing, and I can get a little more influence on the elbow here, and then adjust the outer envelope accordingly. It still needs some work. Now I've got too much influence on the elbow, and it's dragging the bicep down in with it. I need to use the weight tool and also the weight table to get that sorted out. Areas like elbows, hips, pelvises, and sometimes necks are difficult areas to skin and may take a little work, but it's worth the effort when the skin deforms smoothly in the animation. 